Good morning, super coaches. In this one here, we're gonna go through the buy, hold, sell, along with my tips for the week. It was a bit of a tough one last week. We'll get into that after this section. So the most important thing coming into round 13 with your sides is obviously, and I hope that you've, you've learned this by now, it does say this at the top, thank goodness as well to help you out, but your team will score points for your best 13 players, the top 13 scorers in this round 13, obviously 16 and 19 as well. So you put together your 17. So you can have in this scenario, in my team, I've got Terrell May and Curran, and I've got Hughes on the reserve bench. So you can have up to that 17 scorers, as many as you want, 18. That works as well, full team plus the auto emergency. That can work as well. Uh, but what will happen is it just takes your, your 13 best scorers. Okay, if, if you're in the very unique situation where you might have no two RFs at this point of the season, then it will take only one auto emergency. So you get your four reserves, the one auto emergency, as I said, it doesn't matter other than if you ended up having more than one guy that you couldn't fit on, on your reserves. If you're really stacked in one position for round 13 guys, that is the only time I would see it being an issue, but I have not seen that in anyone's team yet where they're completely stacked in one position where you've got like seven CT dubs and don't have any two RFs, for example, there and using all three reserves in that, using one on your mids, using one on your hooker, so-and-so. So first thing to do, count up all your players. So if you do have the, so we can put the SC plus on, which is not showing break evens, which is funny right now, but yeah, you can do the show buys there. It'll show you who is playing or not playing in round 13. You can do the same for 16 and also 19. Just be aware of that. You can also clear that, but in terms of playing in round 13, it will even give you Angus Crichton and these types of guys that are obviously not playing this weekend. But anyway, count those numbers up. Set yourselves up with, with, your, with how many you've got. Really, if you're anything above 15, sort of 15 and plus, I wouldn't make any trade this week. Don't do it. I understand if you've got 13 or 14 to maybe try to improve your setup for this week as well. So some of the clear kind of buys for this week, they do come down in the fullback position and also the center wing, as always, basically. So Joey Manu is a clear one on the list, but I do think James Tedesco is the one that people are going to be targeting this week. And he's gotten very expensive, but let's jump down and have a look at that. And in my team myself, I've got Fuller and I've got Drinkwater. So Teddy's not someone I'll be wanting and needing for this week, personally. But following this one, obviously he's got 151 and he's rolling average there, which is massive. And he'll go up again next week. But he has the buy next week in round 14. So keep that in mind as well if you are looking to grab him. But he's the best, Him, both him and Joey Manu are by far the best captaincy options this week as well. So if you're looking for someone to get good double points on, then Tedesco is going to be that guy for sure. He will be more expensive come round 15, which is something I'll have to deal with personally when I look to potentially bring him in. And, you know, Fuller might be the guy to make way. We'll have to work, you know, work that out over the next few weeks with injuries and, and what comes up there for sure. But Tedesco, the best captaincy option this week, then Joey Manu is going to be second in that scenario there. You have a look at that fullback position and really it's only Drinkwater and Trey Fuller are the other guys you might look to want to own coming into this week with everyone else basically that's somewhat relevant is out for round 13. So that's a, the fullback position, super simple on that front there. For the CT dub, as I said, Manu is the guy you want to have. I do think that if you do own Asako like myself, he's a terrific vice captaincy option. And it's not going to matter this week guys because it takes your best 13 of the 17, 18, 13, 14, however many players you've got, you have a free vice captaincy loop this week because all you've got, you've got so many guys that are out and everyone counts as a scorer. You just pop one of your guys on a buy into your starting team and pop the captaincy on them and you'll get that vice captaincy score. So there's a few ways you can go about this. You can make your vice someone you think is a very, very safe player. So in my scenario, it could be a Ewan Aiken, who's a pretty safe sort of 60-odd, you know, anywhere high 50s to, to 75, 80, with a little bit of upside to about 100 if he scores a try. That's someone that you could pop that captaincy on, uh, that vice captaincy on, easy. Or you go on someone that's a little bit more risque in that of, of Asako, he's gone you know, 150 into 40, 40 into an 84. So you could definitely get a 40 out of him and then you just have to play your captaincy. Where it, in this scenario for me, Sam Walker's gonna be looking to be my captain this week. Against the Cows, I think with six players out, they should be able to dominate them. And he's gonna get heaps of goal kicking and, and all the like there, hopefully. He should be goal kicking with Suali'i kicking last week. He's not on his side this week. Walker should be able to dominate. 
Brown's the other vice captaincy option. It's a really easy, safer one to, to play. Obviously, with Moses coming back as well, they come up against the Sharks there, who have lost a couple of players. Obviously, with Hines and and Cam McInnes out, I, I think that the Eels will play a lot better with Gutho returning and obviously Mitch Moses as well. So. Will it be shared around? Yeah, potentially. But will the Eels have a few more attacking opportunities? I think they will too. So he's an easy vice captaincy as well. But as I said, with that center wing position right there, you've got guys like Isaac Tungo who just aren't scoring well enough to be an option in my opinion. I've got him and I'm holding him and hoping he scores well this week against the Dragons. But there's uh, definitely other better options and usually yeah, they're going to be a lot more expensive apart from David Armstrong, who I think is the best buy of the week in this position at that cheaper price, obviously. And then you do have a lot of the other guys that are more expensive in your Dom Youngs, your Joey Manus. I would be going for Manu over Young at this point. You just know the consistency is gonna be there. Young's at his peak price as well. Manu probably is too, but you know that the consistency will be there for him. You've got Karaz who's on the on the way up and, and still has a nice little run of games over the next few, coming up against the Newcastle Knights this week into Parramatta before they're by, and then it's Roosters when they are missing some of their origin guys, Sharks, Warriors, Cows. So still a little decent run there. And you have missed a couple of the easier ones, obviously with Canberra and St. George in his recent two games, but he's got three tons and a 90 in his last five games, which is pretty crazy. And he'll keep going up for a little bit longer with those three massive scores in his rolling average. So Karaz, still a really solid one. What about Lomax down to seven, uh, 676? So he, he'd be an interesting one if he didn't make origin, but uh, he, he has now as well. With the center wing, as I said, it's probably just those little collection of guys that I mentioned. You and Aiken, you can definitely uh, muck around with. You've got Dylan Lucas, another one of those guys. So they're the two kind of safety options that are playing back row that I think can do a good job for you. When you're making a decision between those two, make the decision based on if you need another guy for round 14 or if you're happy to lead, like, miss out on them next week, but they're gonna the other whoever the other option is, is gonna play round 16 for you. So that's gonna be really, really helpful there as well. So that's the center wing position. The next thing we wanna speak about really is, because they're the most important two at this point, is just who you might want to sell. So when you look at your team, how many origin guys do you have? When you do your numbers on a week to week basis, like are you at sort of 14 or 15 this week? but then you're sort of bang on 17 or 18 there and then 16, you're in a little bit of trouble as well. That might just be because you have so many origin players and it's really, really important to go through your side and, and count up those numbers and see where you're at across this period. And, and if you're looking at my team here, it's uh, not, in, not in the worst shape in terms of origin players at all with Angus Crichton being there, Nico Hines, the next one, uh, Val Holmes is the next one on the list and that's it for my side. So. For me, in this scenario, I think it's very, very easy for me to hold on to those origin guys because I only have three out of my 25 that are in that that are in that situation. In the harms position, who would you trade Hines to anyway this week? Yeah, I've got Walker already. You could muck around and we'll, we'll have a little play now as to who you might want to trade him to, but there's not a lot, to be honest with you, that, that are going to be good for you this week. You know, Matt Burton would have been one. If you don't have Dylan Brown, he's definitely someone you could trade him to. You've got Mitch Moses on, on his return as well, but do you want to pick someone after you know, a little bit of an injury? Do you want to muck around with, with Toby Sexton? Yeah, it's potentially an option as well. Schneider's back for this week. Unlikely to see him, I suppose, too much more when Cleary will come back and they miss 16-19, so do you want that as well? Trindle's back for this week, but so, yeah, you had you know, a few good games upon uh, you know, before he was ousted out of this side. But uh, yeah, you probably don't want him there. So really that half position, it's still a wasteland until next week when Johnson's going to be there, Jerome Hughes. So you, if he's out next week, maybe you could trade him then. But I think this week is probably not worth mucking around with that, with that position. That's for sure. So let's look at the 5.8s while we're here. You've obviously got Max Plath, who's in there at the uh, 500k price. Tyron Wishart, could be looked at next week. He obviously went up 55k last week and he's up to 436, which is a little bit frustrating at that. Tamari Martin finally making that cash that uh, people were wanting in the first place. But yeah, you got Ethan Strange as a hold in that position. Dearden's in origin. So yeah, there's, there's really not much in that 5'8 position either. So I do think you just hold with whatever you've got in that scenario there. Very, very similar to the center wing position in the 2RF. If you're looking at Aiken and Lucas, make that same decision. 
If you did want to trade out Angus Crichton, remember next week we can get Dave Fafida. You can get Eli Katoa. There's a lot of different guys you can look at. Both of them doing good things. Kaipis, Paul, Smithies are all holds at this stage. Do you hold someone like Pat Carrigan? He's actually gone down a fair bit in price over the last few weeks there and has lost 50K for the year. So he's fairly cheap now and, and is someone that you could probably look to hold. If you've got Jermaine Hopgood, he's averaging 70 for the season and it's very hard to get anything like that in the 2RF position. So even with some of those you know, origin games to come, he needs to play decent minutes on a weekly basis because the Eels are struggling. And maybe towards the back end of the buy period is when you could look to maybe move him on when he misses 19 and 20. And that's if he keeps his spot in the side with a few people coming back potentially for the Maroons there. In terms of other guys you might want to look at, it's really only Samuel Afainu next week. There's no one in that sort of cheap range that you might be interested in in the Tour RF right now. And I do think that if you're trading out of Crichton, you want to spend up a little bit of that money. Maybe it's in the, the mid-range. I don't think you want to go for Britton Nicker at the moment. Someone you probably want to avoid at this stage just with the way that he's playing. So yeah, there's not too much on, on offer there, obviously. And uh, next week, I think, is more the play with the Fafita, Gatoa, all these types of guys. At the moment, a lot of the other two RFs you're looking at that's you know got a, a bit of a role here, they yeah, are likely to do all right for a couple of weeks or they're just more base stack guys, which isn't super exciting for Supercoach compared to what it is for Fantasy there. You've got Nafahu White, who will do well again this week, but then what happens in round 15? That's probably the question with him. So yeah, if you're buying him cheap, getting a good week out of him, but then potentially going to lose him. Bryce Cartwright, you could look out for sure, but I don't... Yeah, it doesn't fill me with too much excitement there for sure. And then the front row forward position was, uh, yeah, it's a pretty bit of a wasteland at the moment too. Hopefully you've got at least two players there that can play this week and, and help you out. Harm Sele out for, a, not sure, you know, it's a bit of an extended period of time here with his shoulder issue. So what you got him for has is, is been a little bit frustrating. And obviously a 13 was a loss in price. Hurts him there for sure. In terms of the top guys, it is obviously Max King that you want to be looking at for this week. I think Terrell May will do well. Jack DeBellin, super rock solid in the front row forward position that has Jewel right now as well. So he's a good one to, to look at if you do want to shore up that position for sure. Hazleton going down a little bit with a 34. I think you can avoid him at that price point. But Maxi King, really solid. So it's King, it's JDB. And I think that's about it at the moment for that front row forward position. Otherwise, just hold steady, I think is the easiest way to go about it. If you haven't got Braley yet, I think he's an easy one. He's going to go up in price for a little bit now. I think he'll peak out around 500K. If you want to go up a little bit more, Reed Marnie's a very easy one to grab. 65 and a half average this year, doing good things. He's up at the same average there of Robson and also Grant, and he's priced in between both those two. I would go for Reed over Jeremy Marshall King, although both of them you know, serve you in their own way there with both having two buys over the next, what, seven weeks there. If you do want to wait one more week, then Damien Cook, I think, is going to be a good one. And if you want a little bit cheaper, Jacob Little will be the play there for sure. So that's the Supercoach part of this video. We'll go into my efforts in tipping over the over last week, and it was a bit of a shocker. I ended up with three out of eight. Moved down into second in my family tipping comp, which we need to sort out for sure. Uh, didn't move in the private group. Went down a little bit in the open comp and lost about 400 ranks in the Cowboys official. So it wasn't an absolute train wreck, but... It wasn't great. I did change, well, made three mistakes in tipping, which yeah could have catapulted me, catapulted me up, which wasn't the case. But I think it's a pretty tough week with the five there. And I've gone against the grain with a couple of them there at the moment. I actually think that the Eels are a decent chance of winning this matchup against the Sharks with Moses returning and also Gutho. I think that they'll, uh, they'll play much better. And, and Sharks missing McInnes, who I think is really important through the middle. And obviously Heinz there as well, but luckily they get Trindle back. So I'm still going to tip them just with how they've been playing so far. And the Eels have been really poor after I tipped them last week and they lost to the Rabbitohs. But yes, they get a couple of you know, their players back. Dogs up against Knights. I still think that they're the better team, even without Burton. I think you know, Hacho has been in this team for the majority of the year anyway. And then Sexton came in and played really well. So I think that they can still do a good job even without Birdo in this one. The rest of their team stays very similar. Yes, they're without kick out, but Preston comes into that starting role and he was their best player last year. So I'm still going to lock them in. Most people are tipping the Knights at home and I understand that. But, you know, they're, they've, they outside of David Armstrong dominating last game and sort of Dylan Lucas being incredible, they were the two guys they relied on. And they keep, they keep you know, doing well and, and winning games at this stage of the season. But I do think the Dogs are the better team right now. 
So I might go against the grain there and pick them away from home. Panthers against Dragons, they're still great. The Panthers, even without their players. Dragons miss Lomax and Hunt, which is too big. Dolphins and Raiders, I found this really difficult as well. Dolphins aren't playing their best right now. Obviously lost on the weekend to the Warriors. Raiders are playing, playing pretty solid and don't miss any players. I kind of want to back my, my fuller, fuller Dolphins, but um, yeah, I think at this stage I'm going for Raiders to win by two. Playing well enough to probably get the job done here, but a Dolphins at home is probably the main worry here. That's that one and the first one I'm kind of topsy-turvy with, and then the Roosters are going to smash the Cowboys, basically. That's all it is at uh, that one, and we'll leave our video there. Thanks so much for, for watching that one. I hope, to, hope that helped you guys with Supercoach, and also, yeah, you got to see my tips for the week as well. Thanks for this one, guys. See you in the next one.